Hey everybody, I'm Izzy and welcome back to my little DIY dog and pony show. Today we're going to do something I like to call Table Saw Rodeo. <laughs> In my last video, I turned this wood-looking churro thing on the table saw. And I want to do something similar to this in today's video, but I want something that will turn more spirals all the way around as it's going down. A little bit more controllable and definable as far as, you know, make it easier to define how the grooves, the definition, where they go on the piece, blah, blah, blah. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, it should be a little bit exciting. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. A table saw, some wooden gears, and a little bit of madness. All happening right here, right now. So like all projects, it started off by cutting out some plywood parts, and in this case I'm using some really nasty plywood I had left over. And this is just an experiment, and right now it's not going to make a whole lot of sense because I'm just making all the parts, and I've got a lot of really up-close shots for some reason. So uh, basically I've cut out the sides and the faceplate and rear plate, which will act as the headstock and tailstock of this device. Now I need three gears to make a right angle. So I'm going to have one gear in the center that drives everything. I'm going to have a second gear that connects the drive gear to the side gear that's at an angle and it'll all make sense in a little while here. So to make gears I used Matthias Wandel's um, gear generator program and printed these out and whenever I'm cutting gears I always start by drilling the hole. So I drill the center out and then in this case I'm using a slightly smaller bit than the base of the um, gear tooth and I'll go around and drill out those positions and then I'll come back and drill out the opposite side if that makes sense. So I'm actually drilling two holes, one big one and then one just shaving off the side to uh, get the, the full width of the cut I need. And then in this case, uh, band saws. So uh, whenever you're cutting gears out on the band saw, I always cut it a little bit larger than the diameter. You don't want to mess around with that and that gives you the chance to when you're um, cutting out the teeth, you have a little bit of wiggle room. And in this case, um, I'm cutting off the line, so I'm being very careful about where my entry point is, and I'm just taking the line off. So just, you know, skimming that and taking the line away, and that seems to be, uh, in my experience, the best fit for the gears using uh, Matthias's program. Now, once I have all the uh, center parts cut out, I'll come back around and do the same to the end of the teeth, where I'll just cut off the line, you know, leave everything else, and just to be very careful with the cut and uh, just take the line. Makes for a really nice fit for the gears. Now after the gears are cut, I'm going to clean them up just a touch. I'm going to round over the tips of them just a little bit. It always seems like the tips are where they want to grab. Now for the two gears that act as the right angle, I took a little 45 degree router bit off camera and routed out one the side of the back. Now I'm still going to have to sand those down a little bit to get them to work, but that's a really good place to start. Now after I had the gears made, it was just about putting the body of this thing together. At the moment it's upside down, and I cut out this little belly in the top so when I'm turning this thing on the table saw you'll actually be able to see the piece turning. It's not necessarily important to be there other than just you know visually. Um, so I got this is actually the first chance I got to use the gear clamps from Bessie. Bessie sent me some gear clamps. Shout out to Bessie. Those things are freaking awesome. Uh, I'm gonna have a whole shop full I promise. <laughs> so, so this part of it is where the gear connects to a plate in the back and to do that I had to have like a full center because I want screws to run through that. I hope that made sense. So this is what's going to drive the whole mechanism. There's the center gear, then the secondary or auxiliary gear that I'm attaching to um, the side and then that or the face and then the side gear here. And the side gear is what runs everything. Now off camera I cut a rack which you'll see in just a minute. Um, so once all the gears were working, I cut a piece of 2x4, 4x4 four four down and uh, 
knocked off the corners like I did in the previous video and um, tested to make everything sure everything was working and put it on the table saw. And I don't mind telling you guys, <laughs> I was nervous. The gears were not perfect. There was a little bit of play in them and it made for a little bit of a jarry um, push. Now, I learned right away after using this jig, uh, just for a few minutes, that I needed this smooth kind of push all the way through. And because I'm spinning this uh, pretty substantially against the blade, there's a little bit of pressure there. So um, I kind of gingerly approached it, and what had happened is a couple of spots got caught. So uh, if that makes sense, the blade uh, caught into the piece a little bit, so it kind of paused it. And what I've learned throughout that, that first cut was that I don't not to pause, just to, you know, beef it through. And I don't mind telling you guys, this is easily the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done on a table saw. And those of you who've been following me for a while know that's saying something. Um, but I'm, I'm a firm believer in this. Now, this would definitely work over a router. And this ended up working pretty well. The first cut I made, or this flute right here that I'm making around the, um, the shaft of this piece was a little bit goofy because I kept pausing and, and not putting co you know continuous pressure through it. Uh, but once I kind of got over that fear and found a good hold position for this thing, um, my second cut was way was a lot better. Now it still required a, a hefty bit of sanding, and um, it ended up being something that worked. Now I know with the better gearing system on this and a little bit more accuracy and definitely some bigger gears. The smaller gears made it pretty difficult to um, to work out. If the gears were bigger, it'd make it a lot easier. That this is definitely a doable thing to get very repeatable and really interesting results on a piece of, um, you know, on a piece of spindle or on a, on a shaft. So um, it was a cool project. It was a neat experiment. Um, I will probably be revisiting this. This would definitely, again, work over a router table, which might probably be a little bit safer. But uh, after I got it all done with it, I sanded it out a little bit, and of course I had to put some finish on it. And it does look really kind of cool. So um, neat thing about this is you can do just about anything with it. Just get as many spirals as you want on it. But anyway, hey guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.